Good afternoon, all, and welcome to our, another webinar in our series of, of webinars. Um, today, we're going to be discussing the VAT reverse charge for, for building and construction services, um, a hot topic at the moment, I'm sure you'll all agree, with all the changes due to come into change from the 1st of March. Just a bit of housekeeping to begin with. Um, as you'll see, as per usual, I'm sure you're all used to it now with with the Zoom webinars, there's going to be a Q&A box, a chat box there as well. If you can please put all your questions that you have in there. And at the end of the webinar, our marketing manager, Ashley, will be joining me to, to go through these in an open Q&A session. And we'll do our best to, to answer as many of your questions. One small request of mine is that if you do see a, uh, a question that you want to ask or has already been asked, can you please use the thumbs up icon because that helps us at the end to filter through the various questions. Also, um, just so you're aware, I appreciate my camera is down here and I'm, I'm looking up on two screens. Um, so it's just for the ease of, of the webinar and managing the content. Just a little bit about us. I'm sure you're all aware of us Raffingers, who we are, what we're about and what we do. So these are the key standards that we, we like to adhere to. We want to make a positive impact with our clients, get things done, deliver to a high standard, always make time and dare to be bold, especially with our series of webinars. In terms of the services that we offer, again, many of you will be aware of the, the standard compliance services that we offer, such as accounts, tax, VAT and payroll. But in addition to this, we have our ad hoc and advisory services, I like to call them, all the little things that really help our clients get some added value and things that we really enjoy doing and which we've listed on the slide here. A little bit about me on the screen there. I'm one of the partners at Raffingers. I suppose the best way to describe me is probably um, I love helping my clients. I love to get to know our clients, understand their businesses, understand their goals and what we can do as accountants and business advisors essentially to try and help them reach those goals. So today's webinar, um, as I mentioned, a real hot topic at the moment for the construction and building industry. Um, what we'll do is we're going to go through an overview of the changes, what's happening, what's been announced to date, how does the reverse charge actually work, um, specifically how it works from a subcontractor, main contractor, and an end user point of view. And I always find that there's always a lot of content on this type of stuff that's put out there. And if you were to look online, you'll read a lot of content and you can understand the key changes, but what does it actually mean and how does it actually work? So we'll go through that and I'll do my best to try and explain that to you. What type of services are gonna be impacted by these changes? And you'll see these two words banded around everywhere, specified and excluded services. So again, what I'll do is I'll be going through those lists and hopefully you'll try and understand from there whether your services that you provide or services that you receive as a main contract are gonna be impacted. And then the accounting and invoicing considerations. This is where I think a lot of people are struggling at the moment. They understand what the changes are, they can see how they apply to them, but they're not necessarily sure what to do when it comes to the invoicing or the accounting on their, on their system. So we'll go through that. And again, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions to go through at the end in terms of people specific examples. And then finally, what we'll look at is the treatment of ongoing work and consequences for businesses. Now, the treatment of ongoing work is quite an interesting one because we've spoken to a lot of clients recently who have got large contracts that are on site at the moment. And how do they treat their invoicing before and after the transition date? So again, we'll look at a summary on that and what best to do. And then finally, like I said, looking at the consequences for businesses and what you should be doing as a business owner to get ready to make sure you're not negatively impacted by the changes that come into place. So the changes, what's happened, what's going on? If, you've, um, if you're not sure, well, the VAT reverse charge rules for building construction services will come into play from the 1st of March, so less than a month away. Now, they were originally announced in 2017 and they've been delayed twice. And that was specifically due to Brexit and COVID. And as far as we're concerned, it is all systems go from the 1st of March. So there's, so for those of you out there hoping that there's gonna be another delay, I don't think that's necessarily gonna be happening. And effectively, why were these rules announced? It was all around the missing trailer fraud that was happening in the uh, building and construction sector. And it was very similar to the changes that we saw in the mobile phone sector um, previously, where basically traders were going missing, fat wasn't being paid, 
and leaving a tax gap with HMRC. Now, effectively, the last line there is, is straight from the guidance from HMRC. VAT registered businesses that supply certain construction services to another VAT registered business for onward sale will not charge VAT, but instead issue a VAT invoice detailing the service was subject to reverse charge. Now, the key point to look at when you're looking at the statement there is the onward sale. So just bear that in mind and we'll, we'll come back to that. Now, in terms of the changes itself, what will happen effectively is if you're a supplier, so you're a VAT registered business that receive, that supplies to a, a main customer, the way it would work is that you won't necessarily charge any VAT. But if you're the VAT registered business that receives that supply, you must account for that VAT on your VAT return. So really, it's quite simple as a as a fundamental understanding. So as a subcontractor, you're the supplier, you don't charge VAT. As a customer, you're a VAT registered business, you receive that supply, you account for VAT on your return. But the key point, which I'm sure you've all picked up on, is that no payment has been made. So you haven't necessarily paid out if you're that main contractor, that client, that customer, you haven't paid that VAT onto the supplier. Then you can recover that VAT as per normal. So you'll recover that VAT on your VAT return as you would normally. And what you can see is it's shifting that responsibility of VAT from the supplier to the customer. So from the subcontractor to the main contractor. And that's really to plug this tax gap. Now, what's a really key point in this and something that hasn't necessarily been picked up, which I, I actually discussed in detail with one of our um, clients who's a subcontractor, is that the value of these reverse charge supplies don't contribute to the VAT registration threshold. So if you're a subcontractor and you're looking at your VAT registration threshold of 85,000 pounds, these type of reverse charge supplies won't necessarily contribute to that. So it's important to, to identify that and assess where you're at in terms of your VATable supplies. And of course, this uh, if you've got zero rated work, no reverse charge applies on this. So it's only applicable where you've got standard rate or reduced rate VAT services. So really to summarize, standard rate, reduced rate applies, and it's for individuals and businesses that are registered for that in the UK. And key point to understand from this, it's for any services that are reported within the construction industry scheme, so through the CI scheme. So how does it work? So what is it specifically that goes on? So I've, I've picked up a little bit on that. Now, in terms of the services it applies to, we'll pick that up later in the webinar where I'll look at what we call specified and excluded services. So specified, those being that will fall within the reverse charge regime, excluded are those that won't. And effectively, it's gonna be certain services that are gonna be between two VAT registered businesses where that receiving business, that main contractor, that customer, then makes an onward supply of those services. So it actually supplies it onto an end user. Now, as I mentioned on the previous slide, you need to ensure that these services are part of the construction industry scheme. So they fall as part of the CIS. And what's quite interesting, and I think it's a really good tool going forward, HMRC have actually on, launched their own online tool, which you can use to check if businesses are, are VAT registered and CIS registered, which I think is a really, really useful tool, especially for a lot of main contractors that could have, say, five or six or seven subbies working for them. And they need to make sure that their subcontractors are applying the correct VAT treatment and making sure their invoices in, are done properly. So really, really good to, to know that that's available out there. And a key point, again, to pick up on is that if you've got a supplier that has a reverse charge element to it, then the whole supply is going to be subject to reverse charge. And that's a really key point because you might have a certain contract which is going to have um, a mix of excluded and specified services. And what you've got to look at is go through that particular service that you're providing and say, okay, is there a reverse charge element to this? And then can we apply this reverse charge to that whole contract? Now, in terms of looking at the reverse charge, we've had a lot of questions around construction services and materials. This applies for both. So if you're supplying materials and services and it falls within the conditions that we've looked at previously, then it's gonna fall under the reverse charge regime. And as I've said, it's gonna be for standard and reduced rated, not zero rated. And this will typically be things like, for example, new build residential homes. Now, in terms of a really key point to understand and what I'm keeping banging on about today is about this end user. And it's the last point that you really wanna pick up on my slide 
is that that middle party, that main contractor, intends to make an ongoing supply of construction services to another party. Now, what I've done here, just for, for ease of understanding, is just put a little um, flow chart together, because I appreciate for a lot of our clients here on the call today, going through the qualitative elements of the actual rules may not necessarily bring it home. And actually understanding practically what's going on will help more. So what we've got here is a simple setup, which is probably um, the case in, in most contracts and how it works. What you've got here is you've got a subcontractor, a main contractor and a customer. Now, pre the reverse charge rules, effectively what would happen is that subcontractor would supply services to the main contractor. And here they'll apply 20%. So currently we've got the RC there for the reverse charge. And then that main contractor will then supply those services on to an onward customer. And that's all about that ongoing supply. So it's all about looking at whether that main contractor is then going to be supplying an end user. So if it was looking at pre 1st of March 2021, the VAT will be applied between the subcontractor, the main contractor, and then also between the main contractor and the customer. So it'll be 20% at each stage. And in a, this example, you could be looking at that customer could be a charity, it could be a developer, it could be a limited company, it could be an individual. It doesn't really make a massive difference who that end customer is. But what you need to look at is whether that main contractor is making that ongoing onward supply. And so if that's the case, what would happen post 1st of March 2021 is that subcontractor won't charge VAT, they won't charge 20%. And what they'll do is on their invoice, they'll put it put a statement on there saying that these services are subject to the reverse charge for the building and construction industry. And so they won't charge VAT. The main contractor won't pay any VAT to this subcontractor, but the main contractor will also invoice their customer as per normal 20%. So as you can see, the only difference really is going to be at this point of the chain. The subcontractor supplying the main contractor, as long as these various conditions are met that I put on this slide, effectively, you won't be, be charging VAT. And I should mention that we will be circulating these slides um, to you all that have attended here today. So what I would do if I was you, I'll, I'll print some of these slides off if I was you and just get them stuck on your, your, your wall or your desk so you've got this principle and understanding and there's a couple of slides later on which I would recommend that you almost print out and stick there and have commonly to refer to on an ongoing basis. And what I really like is this um, reverse charge decision tree. So I, I've actually printed this out and I have this sitting literally opposite me all the time when a client calls to understand whether the reverse charge will apply. It's a really, really good way of just going through um, what it is that you're doing and whether you should apply normal VAT rules or whether you should look at the reverse charge. So first question is, does the supplier fall within the scope of CIS, the construction industry scheme? If it doesn't, straight away off the bat, you know you're going to be applying VAT rules normally. If it does, then you go and look at, is it going to be standard rated or is it going to be reduced rated? If it isn't, then again, you know you're going to go to normal VAT rules. And an example, like I said before, would be if you're doing some sort of new build residential. And if it is, then again, you've got to look at your customer or your contractor. So looking either side of the chain. So going back here, looking either side of the chain here to make sure that both the subcontractor and the main contractor are VAT registered, CIS registered. If they are, then you've got to make sure that are they the end user? If they're not, then you apply the domestic reverse charge. So again, very, very simple. If I was you, I'll print this out and you just know you've got it there. Just go through the decision tree and it will just help you understand what type of, of VAT treatment you need to apply. Services. So like I mentioned um, before at the beginning, is you've got various services that this is going to apply to. So what HMRC refers to this as in their guidance is called specified and excluded services. Specified services, which I've listed here, I'm not going to sit here and read through them all, um, but effectively these are services to where you apply the reverse charge. So again, go through these list of services and understand whether what you're doing is picked up in these, in these type of services to, to include on the reverse charge regime. And again, we've got the excluded services here. Now, what's important to note and a real takeaway from this is that if you've got a mix of services, 
So for example, if you're doing both specified and excluded services, you can, or you should, I should say, apply the reverse charge in full to that particular supplier. So I've been discussing a lot recently with, with a number of our clients. Say, for example, if they've got a, they're a subcontractor and they've got a, uh, a large contract with their main contractor on site for, for 15 months, for example, and their contract includes a number of different types of services, both specified and excluded. The rule around this is where you've got a contract and 5% or more of that contract actually includes specified services, you should be applying the reverse charge regime to the whole of that contract. And if you were to go through the HMRC guidance, you might see something which will initially look contradictory to this because they call it the disregard rule. So anything less than 5%, I interpret it and just very simply, anything more than 5% on a contract, whether you're looking at value or time, if it's gonna be something that is specified, something that falls within the reverse charge regime, you should be applying the reverse charge rules to that specific contract and any sales invoices that are raised on that. So again, once I've, we've sent this out, please do go through these lists and understand what you're doing and if it's impacted by that. In terms of the excluded services, just make sure that you only um, need to look at this when you're supplying these on their own. So if you're supplying excluded services on their own and you're actually just gonna be doing them standalone completely to a main contractor, then you won't be applying the reverse charge rules. Now, in terms of, um, we've talked about the mixture of supplies here. So where you've got a mix of single and where you've got a mix of uh, specified excluded supplies, the whole supply will be reverse charge. But what's a really interesting point and something which I think there's gonna be a little bit more fallout on, and I'm sure we're gonna get a, little, uh, a lot more questions on this, is around the supplies of staff. Now, the supplies of staff is a really tricky one. And it's important to understand and distinguish between the supply of staff in terms of whether you're an employment business or the supply of labor where you're just supplying subcontractors. And now the litmus test that I always use on this, and again, I think it's really important to understand is when you're on site or when you're, when you're a contractor or subcontractors are on site, what you need to understand is if there is a defect following completion, who's responsible for rectifying that and who's responsible for getting that sorted. Now, if it's the supplier, then to me, that stands out as being a supply of labor for subcontractors. And so the reverse charge will apply. Whereas if it's not the, the um, supplier, and if it's the, the customer, the end user, if they're responsible for doing that, then to me, it's a supply of staff. So supply of staff, just remember, it's gonna be outside of the reverse charge. The supply of labor, when you're supplying subcontractors, as long as they're CIS registered, VAT registered, then that will fall within the reverse charge. And this is a really key point because I don't think a lot of the guidance that I've seen out there really goes into detail around the supply of staff. And it's really, really important that you distinguish that. And like I said, just use my litmus test. Who is responsible for the defects? Is it the supplier? Is it the customer? If it's the supplier, then to me, you're supplying subcontractors, reverse charge applies to that. If it's the customer, then it's just supply of staff. And so they're outside of the scope of this reverse charge regime. Moving on, reverse charge accounting. So Again, I didn't want to go through all the detail and just brush over the numbers just at a high level as well. So it was a sort of I was torn between this. I, I didn't want to necessarily bore you guys with loads of detail on this, but then didn't want to give you enough to, to make sure that you guys actually understood it. So what I'll do is I'm going to go through just a, a couple of simple examples here, pre-reverse charge and post-reverse charge and what the net impact is. And I think this is really powerful and helps people understand exactly what's going on. So where you've got normal VAT accounting, so that's the top box that we see here, where a subcontractor would normally invoice £100, so this is pre-1st of March 2021, pre the new rules coming into fruition, what you'd normally do as a subcontractor, you'll just have a £100 invoice, you'll charge VAT, and then all you do is you have your output tax, £20, you declare that in your VAT return, £20 output tax, sales tax, and you make a payment of £20 over to HMRC. Your main contractor, your middleman, they would invoice the end user, the developer, whoever it is at the end of there, they will invoice them, let's just say, for example, 200 pounds. So there's a markup on their invoice and that will include VAT. So they're gonna have output tax here, which will go in their box one of 40 pound, which is just the 20 
which is just going to be the VAT on, on, on the £200 there. Then you're going to have the box four, which is going to be your input tax, your purchase side, which is this £20 from your subcontractor. And so the net impact here is just going to be this £20. So the main contractor will just make a £20 net payment over to HMRC. The developer, simple for them, they get an invoice for £200 plus VAT. As long as they're that registered, they will include that £40 as input tax, as purchase tax, and basically they'll recover that. Very, very simple. So as you can see, subcontractor net payment 20, main contractor net payment 20, and for the developer end user net repayment 40 pound. So really simple, what we're used to, what we've seen always. Reverse charge, how does that work then? So subcontractor, as long as they meet all the conditions like we said before, both subcontractor, main contractor, VAT registered, CIS registered, the services are specified, they fall within the reverse charge regime. Effectively, that, serve, that subcontractor will invoice £100, but on this occasion, with no VAT. And what they'll do, really important to understand, on their invoice, they'll include a statement on the bottom there saying that these services are covered within the VAT reverse charge regime for building and construction services. And on their VAT return, nothing's declared in terms of VAT, nothing goes in box one. And net payment, zero, nothing to pay for the subcontractor. Main contractor, this is where all the excitement is. This is where all the changes are. They would, as per normal, invoice £200 plus VAT here. And at the same time, what they'll do is they'll account for the input tax, the purchase VAT that you've got from this subcontractor. So in box one, they'll have £20, which is basically going to be this reverse charge element, plus the £40 from here on the output tax. And in box four, They'll also include this £20 as input tax. So this is all from this subcontractor's invoice, but there's no VAT payment, but it is subject to reverse charge rules. And as you can see, the net effect of that is the two £20 cancel out, and there's just going to be a net payment for this £40 of output tax. So what you can see here in a very, very simple example is the main contractor has gone from making a net payment of £20 to a net payment of £40. And so what you remember is at the very beginning of the webinar, what I said was that the responsibility of the VAT, VAT payment has shifted from the subcontractor to the main contractor. So you can see here, the subcontractor has gone from making, no, from making a payment of £20 to no payment, and the £20 extra is now being paid by the main contractor. The reason behind this, and it's all around this missing trader fraud that I talked about at the beginning, effectively what used to happen was that subcontractor would invoice the main contractor of £100 plus VAT, main contractor would pay it, subcontractor would get the extra £20, but they wouldn't be paying it over to HMRC and they'll be lost forever. Go, go close down the company, a missing trader, and there'll be £20 which is lost out of the system. And so effectively, HMRC's viewpoint on this is that main contractors are more, you know, more sophisticated companies. They have sophisticated finance departments, they're larger companies, they don't necessarily close companies down. They don't necessarily go missing. So the onus is on them to make that payment. And it's more likely that HMRC will receive that payment rather than receiving it from a subcontractor. And to finish the chain off here, in the example, the developer in this occasion has no change. So the developer will receive an invoice of £200 plus VAT. Again, they'll have the £40 input tax and they'll get the repayment of £40. So as you can see, the responsibility of the VAT payments effectively and making sure this process work is really on the main contractor and making sure that they've got everything sorted from their point of view. And again, I've done the same thing when these rules came into fruition. I took this example that I drafted up, printed it out, and I have a copy of that. Anytime I, I need to understand something, I just refer back to it. So it's really good just to have that on hand. So in terms of the actual accounting side of things, and this is where I think a lot of people I'm seeing are probably getting a lot, uh, you know, a lot of questions on, and there's a lot more confusion out there in how it works. So effectively, you understand all the conditions, you understand all the rules, you understand how it works practically, but what do you actually do in terms of your VAT returns? So if you're a supplier or a subcontractor, so going back to our original example, where you're at the bottom of the food chain, as I like to call it, you're the first person along the float. 
what you need to do, of course, is you need to confirm that that supply falls within the reverse charge regime. Both you and your main contractor are OVAP and CIS registered. So what you do at that point is you enter your sale in box six. So you just enter the normal net amount that you would normally in box six, but there is no entry in box one. So historically, you would put the, the VAT in box one. You don't do that anymore. So as a subcontractor, remember, only box six, not box one. Customers and main contractors, they're your guys in the middle, the guys who are receiving the services and then making that onward ongoing supply to an end user. They would enter the VAT in box one. But here's the confusing bit. There's no entry in box six. So effectively, they'll be putting that £20 in our previous example in box one, but nothing in box six. Now, it's important to understand there is nothing in box six. The reason for that is because your subcontractor has made that box six entry up here. So there's no need for the main contractor to make that box six entry. They just put it into box one. And it's pretty straightforward. At the same time, they put it into box four and they put the net purchase into box seven. So main contractor, box one, box four, and box seven. Subcontractor, only box six. So really simple. Again, take a copy of this when we send this round. When you come to do your VAT return, make sure you've got the right boxes included and you've done that properly. Now, if you're a main contractor and you've got loads of subcontractors working for you, it's really important that you understand not just only the rules that are going to be applicable to you, but you understand the rules and how they're applicable to the subcontractors. Because based on my experience, subcontractors aren't necessarily going to be looking through this detailed guidance and they may not necessarily have the best advice given to them. And so they're more likely to be making the mistakes on their invoicing. So typically what I can see happening is a lot of subcontractors that do their own invoicing don't necessarily have bookkeepers or accountants. They do their own back returns, do their own invoicing. They may not necessarily be up to speed on these rules. So what typically might happen is that these subcontractors will probably end up doing normal invoicing as they would pre-March 2021. And so where you're a main contractor, what you need to make sure is that when you're getting that subcontractor invoice, you're actually looking at it and going, is this correct? Have they actually done the VAT treatment correct? There shouldn't be any VAT on this and actually putting it back to them to reissue a correct invoice. So hopefully that's cleared up everything that you need to know in terms of, of the invoicing. Now, we're sorry, in terms of the actual accounting. Now with the invoicing, um, what you need to make sure is that nothing really changes from, from an invoicing point of view. When you have a sale or a supply that falls under the ver reverse charge, all the normal requirements of, of a VAT invoice are required. So you need to still include your VAT number. So if you're a subcontractor and you're invoicing a main contractor, again, include that statement that the VAT reverse charge applies, but also make sure you include the, the VAT number, your VAT registration number on the invoice. It's important that you do that. And like I said, the second point down here, making sure that, that you've got that note that the reverse charge applies. Um, what's an interesting point and something that a lot of people haven't necessarily picked up on is there should also be a note on this invoice that should state how much VAT is due under the reverse charge or the rate of VAT. So going back to our previous example, if you were the subcontractor, you're invoicing £100, you can either say £20 applies here or 20%. And again, say, for example, if you're doing commercial um, commercial conversions to residential, you'll be doing a reduced rate of 5% VAT. So again, you'll have to just um, uh, change that. So make sure that you've got the VAT on, on there in terms of the actual amount or the percentages. Treatment of ongoing work. Again, a real area of confusion and what people should be doing. Like I said, with everything, I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself, take a print out of this until the end of, um, or till, till the end of May, beginning of June, and just have that there so you know exactly what the rules are. Um, supplies invoiced before 1st of March. Again, very, very simple. Anything before 1st of March, anything invoiced that is, normal rules apply. Supplies invoiced after 1st of March, new reverse charge rules apply. Very, very simple, straight rule, easy to understand. Contracts though that are gonna be across transition dates. So this was a really, really key point that you get this right. This could be where, for example, you've got one major contract and you do tranche invoicing. So for example, you've agreed with your you've agreed with your main contractor or your end user that you're going to invoice in five or six or seven tranches and each invoice will be done on specified dates and paid on specified dates. 
So it's important that you, you get your rules right on this. And again, very, very simple to, to follow if you just go through it systematically. So if the invoice is entered into your customer's accounting system before 1st of March, and the payment is made on or before 31st of May, then the normal VAT rules will apply. However, if the invoice is entered before the 1st of March on the customer's accounting system and the payment is made after the 1st of June, on or after the 1st of June, then the reverse charge regime applies. So it's important you get it right here. That's really key in terms of the payment dates. And again, very simple on the last line there. If it's entered onto the customer's accounting system on or after 1st of March, payment made on or after 1st of March, the reverse charge applies. Again, very, very simple. So really important that you look at these payment dates, especially if you're doing larger contracts and you're doing charge invoicing. So to wrap up, consequences for businesses. So what is it that is going to really impact you? Now, as you can see, the consequences in terms of cash flow are going to be detrimental for some subcontractors. So a lot of subcontractors I know, um, a lot of the businesses, they virtually work from VAT repayment to, sorry, VAT payment to VAT payment, and they're, and they're virtually working on a very tight cash flow basis to, to when they're invoicing their customers. So if you're a supplier, you're a subcontractor, you're at the bottom of the food chain, like I said, your cash flow is going to be reduced by 20%. So you're not invoicing that VAT. So you're not going to be receiving that extra 20%. And so it's important you really understand that and you've planned your cash flow. So like I always tell all our clients, have you got a cash flow forecast in place? Do you know what's going to be happening to you in the next six months in terms of invoicing and, and cash collection? Because effectively, you're going to get 20% less cash. And I know I've spoken to a, a couple of clients recently about this, and that's really detrimental to their business because that extra 20% helps them pay the overheads. And yes, sometimes they may end up paying their VAT a little bit later, but it helps them almost keep that cash flow cycle, that working capital cycle moving. So it's really important to understand if you're a subcontractor, you're going to be worse off by 20%. And again, one important point to do here is look at your accounting scheme. So if you're on the cash or the accruals, you need to understand whether that scheme is appropriate for you and actually need to check whether you should be switching over to, to another scheme. And one of the key points, which I think a lot of people are missing at the moment, is making sure that your you know, your accounting system, your staff, they actually know and understand what's going on. So you're going to have increased admin with regards to invoicing and checking your supplies and that sort of thing. It's important that whoever does the invoicing, whoever does all the, all, all the admin side of things actually understands because your invoices have got to have some statements on there. You've got to put the VAT on there. You've got to check the supplies. You've got to check whether your customer's VAT or CIS registered. There's going to be a lot more admin. So you really need to know what's going on. What's the impact of the main contractor? So the customer. Now, the customer is in what you would say a bit of a positive position. I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but they have 20% extra cash. So that 20% that was meant to be going to the subcontractor is now going to the customer, the main contractor. But in my opinion, I don't think this is a good thing because effectively you're going to have a high liability to pay to HMRC. And if you're receiving more, you've got more cash, the temptation is always going to be there to spend it, to pay for certain suppliers, and you might necessarily, you might get yourself into some sort of false sense of security of thinking I've got more cash than you actually do. And so what you'll see is a lot of businesses will have a lot of high liabilities to, uh, to HMRC. And to me, that isn't necessarily a good thing because that's going to be meaning that you have more exposure to this penalty regime. And what that means basically is if you make a VAT payment or you file a VAT return past the, the deadline day, HMRC will levy a penalty on you. And that penalty is based on a percentage of your of your VAT due. Now, if you miss that payment or that VAT filing date and you had to pay more VAT because you've collected more, your penalty is going to be higher. So really key point, and I think that's been really glossed over. A lot of clients I've spoken to have completely missed that point and thought, okay, gosh, this is a serious situation. I need to make sure I'm organized. I'm putting the money away when I'm collecting it to make that onward payment to HMRC. I don't have that temptation to, to spend it on to pay off certain suppliers. At the same time, you've got to make sure you file your VAT returns and pay your VAT returns on time. Otherwise, you're going to be getting some nasty penalties. I, I can see that happening. And again, just like subcontractors, you're going to have some more admin. And I do think for the main contractor, it's more so because subcontractors, like I said, aren't necessarily going to have the most sophisticated systems. 
typically subcontractors are smaller businesses. Usually it's the, um, it's the individual who owns the business, I suppose that does all the invoicing. If they don't have a bookkeeper or an accountant, they may not necessarily understand the rules. They'll probably end up getting the, the rules wrong and interpreting them wrong. They may supply on with VAT. So for the main contractor, you really need to make sure that your staff understand or whether it's you that's doing the invoicing and understanding what's going on, that you actually looked at your subcontractors invoices. Have they done the correct treatment? Are you paying that? Are you not? So again, a lot, of, a lot to do here on both sides. So that pretty much brings me to an end in terms of all the content that I wanted to, to cover off today. I'm just going to open it up to Ashley and we're going to have an open Q&A. So just bear with me for, for a minute. Hi, Mel. Hi, Ashley. Hey, guys. Um, I hope that you all found that useful. Obviously, Mel, thank you for sharing so much really useful guidance. Um, there have been a couple of questions that have come in already, but... Guys, now, while it's all fresh in your head, if you have got any questions, do pop them in the Q&A and we can go through them with Mehul now. Um, I will kick off with the first couple of questions that came in. So Mehul, can you confirm that any subcontractors who are not CIS registered should still charge standard rate that? Okay, so a really important point, and I can't stress it enough. You have to be CIS and, and VAT registered on both sides. If that service doesn't fall within the CIS registration, so for example, CIS registered services, and I'm gonna flick back a couple of slides here, bear with me two seconds. So going back to this slide here, so for the services impacted by the changes, mm -hmm. what we're effectively talking about here is if a subcontractor is not CIS registered, it's more than likely that the service that they're providing is gonna be in this slide here, it's gonna be on the excluded list. So if you're on the excluded list, then the reverse charge won't apply. And as you likely say, it's gonna be charging back the standard rate. So again, it's important to understand that when you're going back to this little flow diagram, both the subcontractor, main contractor, both have to be VAT registered and CIS registered. If they're both CIS registered, it means the supplying services within this list that are gonna be including the, 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 um, uh, the reverse charge. If they're not, then it's going to be on that list. And so you will just charge it a standard rate. Okay, thank you. And also, if you're a subcontractor and you're paying for and supplying materials, which incur that, do you still invoice the main contractor under reverse charge and claim it back yourself? Yeah, again, very, very simple. Just break it down, two separate processes. I know the, the interesting point of materials, a lot of people have asked me this question about materials and supplying services and labour and subcontractors and that sort of thing. When you're supplying materials, what you're going to be doing effectively is you're supplying materials and services on. And if it falls within the reverse charge, no VAT. However, if you're buying those materials and if you're actually incurring to having to pay that, yes, you can recover that VAT on those materials. So again, just treat it separately. Just see yourself at what point do you fit into the chain? Okay. And so I hope I hope that helped. Um, if 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 you want any further clarification, obviously just pop another question in. Um, if can Zero and QuickBooks deal with this easily from the main contractor's point of view? Yeah, it can. So um, what you need to do is just make sure that you've accounted for the invoices correctly. I think where a lot of people get a bit confused with this is where the bookkeeping or the invoicing is not done correctly. And that's where they really fall down from an accounting systems point of view. Whether you're using Zero QuickBooks, Sage, Cashflow, whatever it is that you're using, what you need to do if you're a main contractor is understand the invoices coming into you. Have they got VAT on there correctly? And if they haven't, again, don't process them, put them back into your subcontractor and get them to reissue those invoices correctly. And then all you have to do is make sure that you account for the VAT correctly on that. So where the tricky point, and I can see where this person is going with this question, is where they get the invoice from the subcontractor. And because you're not paying that VAT over, how do you actually account for that on, on zero? So mm -hmm. it's like, as you would normally, zero can do that. And again, if you've got any questions on how to practically do that, if, we, if you're a client of ours, we're more than happy to show you actually what to do on zero to ensure that that reverse charge element so going back to my example, including the £20 in box one and including the £20 in box four, how that actually happens if you're not making that actual payment 
onto the subcontractor. Both Zero QuickBooks or the, the main accounts and packages can definitely handle this. Perfect. And as Mel said, just get in touch if you would like extra help with that. Um, and this question is, what if you are sometimes a subcontractor and sometimes a main contractor? Happens all the time. Happens all the time. All our clients um, sometimes will work as a subcontractor and will work as a main contractor. You just need to know where you sit in the food chain, unfortunately, on every single contract. You need to understand where you're at. In those contracts where you're a subcontractor, you're at the bottom there, no VAT charged on. Um, if you're a main contractor, you have no VAT coming into you, but you just make sure you do all your accounting properly. But to be honest, it's a really common thing that happens. We've got loads of clients that sit there and mm -hmm. are just different services as subbies and as main contractors. So like I said, you just need to know where you sit in the food chain, how to interpret the rules and, and where to apply them, basically. And really important, really, really important. Get your systems and processes right. Get it right in your mind and separate out where you're doing subcontractor work, where you're doing main contractor work. Definitely. And as a subcontractor, this car, this com this person currently charges 20% VAT, but pay 9.5% on the flat rate scheme. Will they fall into the reverse VAT charge? So will they lose the 9.5% flat rate? It all depends. It's never like with anything. Yep. And, and clients hate this when I give them this <laughs> answer. It all depends because clients really want a straight answer. And, and um, it really just depends. So what you probably need to do, and this goes back to my last slide, I think it was, what you need to do is if you're, I imagine in this example, so I think actually Karen's asked that question on this. So yeah. Karen, what you need to understand on this is you're the subcontractor here. You need to check whether that accounting system is appropriate, accounting scheme is appropriate for you. Now you're charging 20%, but you're not gonna be charging that 20% on now. You're not gonna be collecting that 20%. And then effectively that flat rate scheme, that's not necessarily going to be appropriate for you because you're going to be losing out basically on that potentially. So what you want to do, and it's really like a, what I call it is a, it's a spreadsheet exercise. You want to understand what it is, the actual impact and the quantitative impact of you losing out. So just take a before and after example, look at the 20% that you're charging, look at the 9.5% that you're going to be paying out, then look at it after, take away the 20%, look at the 9.5% that you've got on the flat rate and are you better off? And it all just depends in terms of what the volume you have in terms of purchases and sales. Really, you need to, it's a very difficult one. You really need to look at the numbers and see how much you're claiming back in, potentially claiming back in input VAT if you weren't on the flat rate scheme. And so you need to do some sort of spreadsheet exercise and see if it's beneficial for you to, to come off that flat rate and possibly you know, go onto the cash scheme so you can actually reclaim some input VAT back and so you can get some repayments back from HMRC as opposed to making that 9.5% and potentially, like you say, losing out on that. Thanks, Mehal. And um, Karen, I, I hope that helps. But obviously, again, just let us know if, that, if you want any more information. Um, so Deborah has asked, a CIS slash fat registered subcontractor also supplies her with a monthly account of materials which she purchases from their shop. Will this be subject to the reverse charge? Oh, that's an interesting one. So you've got a <laughs> subcontractor also supplies materials which you then purchase from their shop. Okay, so I've got that. That's fine. So yes, again, you have to look at it, the invoicing and how they do it. But Again, like you say, Deborah, if that is a CIS VAT registered subcontractor, they're also supplying you materials. And if those materials are for services that are going to fall within the reverse charge regime, going back to the specified and excluded services list, then again, that will be subject to reverse charge. Now, where I suspect, and I could be wrong, and, and again, come back to me on, on, the, on the questions, they give you a monthly invoice. So it's like a retainer of some sort that you may pay them for the materials, as long as you know, all those materials are used for specified services in the reverse charge regime, then yes, they're going to be subject to reverse charge. But this is the tricky thing with all of this at the moment. And where I'm seeing a lot of people get a bit confused on this is where you have quite large contracts and where you have a mix of, of I suppose, reverse charge and non-reverse charge type of services. So you really need to understand those materials that are being supplied what type of service are they for and just making sure you do the appropriate treatment on there. Thanks, Mel. And um, what are the transition deadlines for applications? 
in terms of applications, it's the 1st of March. So it's going back to this table here that I had. So the 1st of March is when the rules come into play. And like I said, you just need to make sure you understand what the payment dates are and when to apply those rules. Again, if you, this is only, that table there is only where you've got large contracts really where that's possibly gonna apply. Yeah. If you're just gonna be invoicing before the 1st of March. It's gonna be normal rules. After the 1st of March, it's gonna be the new reverse charge rules. Thanks, Mel. And if a main contractor with gross status does specified subcontract work to another main contractor acting as a subcontractor in this occasion, but with gross status, should they include reverse charge or is it the normal VAT invoice? So let's go back on that. You've got a main contractor with gross status. <laughs> <laughs> specified services to another main contractor yeah that first main contra contractor is actually a subcontractor yes yeah. as long as everything's within the specified service list um again your gross status registered your cis registered your vat registered it will fall within the reverse charge for specified services again very simple perfect thank you and this is the last question i believe that's come in so they invoice, this from Kelly, they invoice housing associations and councils. Do they still charge 20% VAT on their sales invoices? Or does this come into the uh, the reverse charge as they are gross status on payments? So let me just get it right. So they invoice housing associations and councils. Yeah. Um, so it would be useful to have a little bit more information on that, but I'm presuming it's going to go back. So I'm presuming the housing association and council here, Kelly, is your end user, your customer. Um, you are the main contractor. So yes, you will then, when you're supplying or making a sales invoice out to the housing association and council, you will apply the 20%. So it's very simple from that point of view. When you're, when you're actually supplying an end user, you do have to apply that 20%. So looking at this little flow here or the decision tree, and in that decision tree, it's going to be this little bit down here. Is, is your customer an end user? If they're not, domestic charge, um, domestic reverse charge applies. If they are, then you just do the 20% of the normal VAT rules. So it's just knowing where you sit in the food chain. Perfect. Um, Kelly says thank you for that, Rahul. And this is this question has just come in. Um, if a contractor is VAT registered, however, is verified with HMRC for gross CIS, what would happen then? So is it a main contractor or a subcontractor? Is it specified? So a subcontractor is VAT registered, however, is verified with HMRC for gross CIS. Yeah, again, um, not much different in terms of when it comes to the VAT, really. I think a lot of people are possibly getting slightly confused with the gross CIS and the VAT. Yeah. So what you need to understand going, going back again, if you're a subcontractor, your CIS registered, like you'd rightly say actually they're gross CIS registered yep. and they're VAT registered. So again, if they're supplying a main contractor, as long as that main contractor is VAT and CIS registered, it will just be reverse charge as per normal. Perfect. So that is all of the questions that have come in. I think that's a good point to wrap up. If anyone does have any more questions, just drop us an email, drop um, myself, Ashley, an email. My email was on the um, Zoom register when you registered for the webinar. Or, and I can forward that on to Meho and some of our other partners who specialize in this area, or just drop Meho an email directly and I'm sure he won't mind getting back to you. Mm -hmm. um, there has been one more question that's just popped up. So I will just run that one quickly, but that's that will be the last question that we go through. So that's, they're a subcontractor. Do they need to notify both their subcontractors and clients? Okay, so that's a little bit contradictory there. So you're a subcontractor, and you need to notify your subcontractors. So you're almost in a double chain. So with that slide that we've got here, um, the one that I'm on, what you would do is you would add another little bit here where you have another subcontractor supplying into a subcontractor. So you've almost got like a long of a chain here of, of four boxes, if you want to call it that. And you're right, you're right. You will completely look at the whole chain and you'll notify both sides. So you'll need to go through that decision tree for every service that's supplied to you. So your subcontractor, if they're supplying services to you that are on the specified list and they are VAT registered and they are CIS registered and you are VAT registered and you are CIS registered, then the VAT reverse charge rules will apply from when your subcontractor invoices you 
so no VAT will apply. And then when you're a subcontractor with that service and making that onward supply to a main contractor, if as long as both sides are VAT registered, CI is registered, again, that reverse charge will apply and no VAT will be applied on that invoice. So I think what you've got here effectively for that question is you won't have the three boxes here. You'll have another subcontractor here, call it subcontractor zero, who's going to be applying uh, so supplying services to subcontractor one. And as long as they meet the conditions, like I've mentioned, VAT registered, CIS registered, specified services will always be a reverse charge. You have to understand one of the key points in this is all around that end user. You only apply the 20% when you're supplying to an end user. So someone who's not going to be making that onward supply or that ongoing supply. Hopefully that's answered that. Perfect. Thanks, Mahal. And just to answer somebody who's commented in the chat, um, we can definitely provide templates that can help you communicate to your subcontractors and main contractors. That's a really great idea. So um, I will get working on that for you guys. Yeah, definitely, definitely add it to the list. And also we're going to be sharing articles in the weeks coming up. So we're going to have an article on suppliers, subcontractors and how they can kind of manage their cash flow once this change comes in. Um, so we will share that content with you guys um, to everybody that registered and to people who couldn't make the webinar. We'll share all of that to you. Um, as Mehul mentioned earlier, we will be sharing a recording of the webinar. It will either be with you tomorrow or Monday. Um, we will also be sharing slides so you can download, as Mehul said, and print off any relevant diagrams and sheets that you want to have on your desk to work through. And we've got a really, really great FAQ sheet that our partner Andrew prepared, which answers loads and loads and loads of questions that I'm sure everyone is kind of asking themselves, trying to figure out. So we will send all of that content and more to you over the coming days, weeks. Um, so just stay tuned for that. Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention was that recently we've had some really, really great R&D claims for construction companies. Um, so if you think that you might be qualifying for R&D, don't forget to get in touch with us because that's something that we specialize in and it can be a great way to inject cash flow into your business at a time where, you know, businesses will need it, right? So um, get in touch with us if, if you think that you could be qualifying for R&D as well. Um, there has been a question came in that said, how does Mehul keep his hair so well-groomed during lockdown? And I wish it was well-groomed, I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> I would... I would definitely say that he's probably cutting it himself at home. But um, that's just I my... I wish I, was, I wish I was that talented. But that's everything. If you've got any questions, as I said, just drop us an email. We're always here. We're always at the other end of the phone. And thanks again, Mehul, for yes, hosting thanks. the webinar. Thank